I'm, I'm really delighted um, to get the opportunity to talk with um, everybody here at the core meeting. I'm sorry, of course, not to be in Madrid. I am instead in chilly, rainy Michigan today. Um, but nonetheless, happy to get to talk with you a little bit about some of what we've been doing with um, Humanities Commons and the work that we have in front of us. Um, we're delighted to be working with CORE in the implementation of Notify. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about our um, network, what Humanities Commons is, how it functions, and then we'll talk a little bit about what um, Notify is going to make possible for us. Um, and most of what I, I would say um, really echoes a lot of what Jean-Claude just said um, in terms of an expansion of the tool set um, that is available directly to scholars and a real connection of repositories to a broader ecosystem of scholar-driven scholarly communication. So Humanities Commons, um, just to tell you a little bit about it, um, we are an international scholarly network um, that's focused on the humanities. Um, we have more than 30,000 users around the world and across humanities fields. And in fact, beginning to branch out a little bit um, beyond the humanities into social sciences and STEM fields. Um, humanities Commons was originally launched by um, the Modern Language Association in the US in 2016. Um, we have since that time migrated its hosting to Michigan State University. So it's here with me in Michigan um, and is run now by a team um, that we are building within the College of Arts and Letters. And that's really dedicated to thinking about the future of scholarly communication in digital space. Um, Humanities Commons is committed not just to open access, but to open infrastructure, to open finance, and to open governance. And um, there are a lot of details about the history and principles and operations of Humanities Commons that are available at um, sustaining.hcommons.org. Um, this is where we detail all of our practices and all of the ways in which the network will be developing in the coming years. Um, in the meantime, um, just to tell you a little bit about the infrastructure, um, Humanities Commons is built on two primary software stacks. Um, there is a social network that is the primary face of Humanities Commons for users, and it is built on a large-scale WordPress instance um, running the BuddyPress plugin. And this um, allows our users to create rich profiles, for instance, that function like CVs and give scholars a, a public means of presenting the work um, that they're engaged in. It also allows them to participate in discussion groups um, and to, to um, engage with scholars who have similar interests to share their work um, and, and to, to um, collaborate on particular kinds of projects. It also allows um, the, the social network um, allows uh, members, sorry, I'm, I'm opened so many tabs, I'm not sure which one it is that I'm looking for at this point. This one allows members to create WordPress websites to do a very wide variety of things with. Um, this is a conference website, obviously, um, but we have websites that are dedicated to particular projects. We have websites that are dedicated to classes. We have websites that are dedicated to individual blogs and other kinds of research outputs and um, so on. So there's a, a wide range of kinds of activity that are taking place within the network. Um, in addition to the social network aspect of the commons, um, we've connected it to a library grade repository um, that allows users to deposit sorry, again, tracking down um, my, my various tabs, um, that allows users to deposit materials that they wish to share with the network and with the world beyond. And so deposits in, in our repository are assigned DOIs and the feeds from the repository are consumed by numerous open access research aggregators. And then deposits are automatically um, shared with groups that the, the depositor tags in the process of marking up their metadata. So a group um, can then create a collection 
of work that is in its area by capturing um, that those deposits as they appear. And that way, the the um, their notifications go out to group members of new deposits so that they know that this material is available. So our repository accepts um, a very wide range of content types. Um, we of course accept preprints and postprints, and and where copyright permits um, published versions of research. But we also accept a wide range of non-traditional formats um, for work um, that enable scholars and researchers whose outputs take forms other than the monograph or the journal article to develop their work's impact by getting it into circulation within their peer communities in the same way that a journal article might be, um, might be uh, circulated. And in this way, um, researchers whose, whose career development depends not on publishing in conventional journals, but instead on conference presentations or on white papers or on other kinds of um, open educational resources, for instance, other kinds of materials that benefit their um, research assessment and research continuation. This, um, this network supports and really facilitates that work. Um, so Notify is going to allow us to expand the functionality of the repository quite sig significantly. Um, users, as you know, we heard from about Notify yesterday, users will be able to send messages to the discussion groups in which they participate, indicating that their work is available for review. And the groups will be able to send back messages to the repository, indicating that materials are being reviewed. And so the status of those reviews um, and the potential for review will be um, visible visible within the network. Users um, will also be able to use the WordPress websites to create overlay journals that draw on materials that are housed in the repository. And similarly, we're going to be working on building out a connector that will allow users to submit deposited materials for publication, whether in network journals or in uh, on third party platforms such as Janeway. So we're really thinking about the repository as becoming a hub of activity um, that then connects out to groups, it connects out to journals, it connects out to other kinds of, of research publishing um, platforms and, and networks. But in order to make this possible, um, we have to do some significant upgrades um, to our repository platform, uh, right? In addition to implementing the notify functionality. Um, we're currently running the repository in Fedora and our plan is to migrate to Invenio in late 2022 or early 2023. Um, and our development of notify functionality will begin shortly thereafter. Um, now, there are some challenges that this presents for us. Um, developing this new means of really centering the repository as the hub of activity within the network. Um, the primary difficulties for us revolve around team size, right, and a, a challenging hiring environment that we're in right now. I mean, we need significant additional support in order to get this work done, um, because we are a very, very tiny nonprofit with a very tiny team and not a lot of um, what wiggle room in order to um, continue the, the expansion of our network. But there are some secondary challenges as well, um, which include like the need to develop the means of representing and communicating the impact of work that's been deposited and published in this, this system that we imagine. So that the work that's published through our network is taken just as seriously in personnel and institutional evaluation processes as is conventionally published work. But we imagine that this network of repositories and review communities and publications presents a real opportunity for undoing um, what another colleague of mine has referred to as the debilitating mathematics of prestige, um, which Jean-Claude Guedon also referred to um, in thinking about the ways that that focusing on prestige really hampers 
actual communication in, in scholarly landscapes. So our shift um, to InVineo is going to allow us to transform the repository, which now is being actively used. We have deposits coming in daily. Um, those deposits are being really actively downloaded because of the ways that the network communicates their availability to discussion groups and therefore to members of those discussion groups. But we nonetheless want the repository to be more of an active collaborative workspace that would allow us to create versions, for instance, that can track a project over time, that can create spaces with varying levels of openness to contributions and to, um, to, to feedback so that, so that project teams can work together um, toward publishing things through the repository, um, but can share materials with one another prior to that moment of formal publication. Um, the review processes that we believe that Notify will will facilitate for us um, are finally. I mean, we're we're excited that they'll they'll surface not just the prestige of the publication, but instead the significance of the work. Right by allowing the discussions of the work and the feedback on the work to be part of a community process and allow the 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 work that is done in review to be represented alongside the work as well. Um, we're also um, firmly, we believe quite firmly that the openness of our infrastructure is going to help eliminate barriers to participation in knowledge production. Um, Jean-Claude referred to the green-gold divide. And one of the problems with that divide is, of course, that gold has overwhelmingly, not of necessity, but just of sort of inertia, um, become associated with author pays mechanisms. And that has ended up closing many authors out of the process in the same way that the prior subscription model closed many researchers out of the process. We really want to make sure that the network remains completely open to all end users. And therefore, we're working on institutional partnerships to help support the network and ensure that it can remain open. Um, benefits to the, the researchers involved and to the institutions involved include that rich user profile that I, I showed a little while ago. A profile like this um, can allow researchers to begin developing really textured narratives about their work and its goals and can help demonstrate how they're creating impact within their communities so that we can move away from some of the purely quantitative metrics for evaluating research profiles and instead really begin thinking about, about values and about what it is that scholars are trying to achieve and how they can represent their work and its achievements in this regard. And then as we saw yesterday, um, this network of, of research outputs and profiles might enable us to begin the development of an open, transparent, scholar-governed system for research information management that can enable institutions to end their relationships with the more extractive corporate entities that are currently providing those services right now. So more than anything um, for us, the Commons has been founded on the concept of energizing and supporting direct scholar to scholar communication and collaboration and minimizing and even eliminating the intervening forces that restrict and constrain it. Now, our hope, in fact, is that we can place our tools directly in the hands of our users, as Jean-Claude noted, really allowing them to create new work with those tools in ways that we can't currently imagine. So thank you again for inviting me today. Um, I am going to stop there. I'm going to stop my share and I am going to turn it back to Kathleen. Thank you, Kathleen. Thanks so much. Could you put Kathleen back up? Uh, there we can see you again. Um, I'm wondering if uh, Kathleen is with us live, so I'm wondering mm -hmm. if anyone has any questions or 
questions for Kathleen or just comments about what you heard um, from Jean-Claude and Kathleen. Um, Bjorn? Uh, great, thanks. That's, that's very interesting. I looked up the plugin, by the way, to please see if this is something I can use. And, uh, oh yeah, that's right, true, sorry. Uh, I need to turn around. <laughs> sorry. And, and <laughs> So yeah, Bjorn Brems, that's my name. So I see which direction do I go? This way, this way, there's the camera. All right, there it is. Okay, now I see it. Uh, thank you very much. Um, the f not being a humanities scholar, the first thing I'm thinking about, of course, is uh, the uh, uh, Open Library of the Humanities from Martin Eve. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm, I'm uh, wondering what's the re what relationship you are seeing and envisaging between yours being more of a social network but you can have mm -hmm. you know your your uh, individual overlay journals and the olh which is which is more explicitly for publishing uh, humanities journals so yeah you could comment on that. so the the platform that is under olh is janeway um it's the the journal workflow software that martin and his team have developed and um, we are working with the Janeway team and with Martin directly on that overlay journal workflow to think about how depositors in our repository at Humanities Commons could either um, push a publication to a Janeway journal for um, review and evaluation for publication, or how an editor of a Janeway journal could in turn um, solicit submission from depositors within a repository and build an overlay journal issue out of those materials that have already been deposited. Um, so, you know, uh, the, the journals that are currently in OLH are, um, are, are already defined, right? They're formally established like journals in the sciences, they have editorial boards, they have editorial workflows, um, they have submission processes and so forth. The, the work that we do with Notify may help shift the ways that some of those journals receive um, submissions, but likely those journals will remain um, focused in the ways that they are. Our goal is really to make it possible for new overlay journals to think about how they interact in more open and ongoing ways with the materials in the repository. I hope that helps. Thumbs up. Awesome, thank you. I've lost the image from your camera, so I, I can hear you, but I can't see you at this okay. point. Sorry about that. We'll try to get that. That's fixed. okay. I mean, I think the key aspect is that um, with Notify, any enabled service or repository will be able to interact with any other enabled service or repository. So the possibilities right. are, are, are wide, and we certainly are looking to work with with Martin and, and, and Janeway on some of these things. Yeah, one of the things that we're most excited about for um, you know, deploying Notify and um, really adding the full functionality of Inbox Outbox is um, thinking about how our repository as a disciplinary space can interact with um, institutional repositories so that our members who deposit with us don't also need to deposit with their institutional repositories, but the metadata can be automatically sent to their institutions in ways that allow the institutions to determine how they want to deal with those deposits. Thank you, Kathleen. And I think you just answered <laughs> the first question that the online question which is um, how Humanities Commons, can it interface and harvest metadata from other open repositories? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think I think that this is exactly what we want to be working toward is really recognizing that, um, you know, wherever it is that users go where they do their primary work, where they they spend their research time um, is going to be the place where they're most active. And 
that space may or may not be the space in which their work is most readily discovered. Um, so we need to be able to use the networks like Notify is attempting to build in order to create greater discoverability, regardless of where a user is making their deposits, where they're doing their research, to ensure that the work that they publish is as findable as it conceivably can be. Thanks, Kathleen. Um, there's another question for you here online. Um, uh, this looks great, thank you. How do you add members on Humanities Commons? Is it linked to the human resources system, I think? And do members add publications manually or use ORCID? So Humanities Commons is completely open. Any interested person out there in the world can create an account openly. Um, and you know we have a wide range of authentication mechanisms that allow um, folks to connect into it. Um, you can create a user ID directly on the system. You can use a Google ID. You can um, use, uh, we're, we're about to um, come out with some other means of creating connections like Orchid and so forth. Um, the deposits are done manually right now um, by the the author, and um, they are the author is asked to submit appropriate metadata to go along with it. Um, we um, attempt to attach ORCID IDs where we can um, to those deposits. Um, users are encouraged to add their ORCID to their profiles so that we have that information. And um, where a, a where an item that's being deposited has been published with a publisher and has a DOI, that DOI can be used to pull the metadata from the publisher so that we have, um, we have authoritative metadata rather than sort of reinventing that wheel. But yes, right now, um, deposits are manually um, submitted by individual users. 